I'm not exactly a spring chicken anymore. A <laughs> spring chicken now, Uncle George. The branch cut up Chaplin Jay's leg pretty bad. There was uh, blood everywhere. You really didn't like me in the beginning. Not true. Yep, it is. You were so competitive. Hi, Miss Jean. Join me on a trip to Discovery Mountain, where the air is clear, clear enough to hear your imagination, and where every day is an exercise in faith. Join me for today's expedition in Discovery Mountain. Are you ready for another episode in this super special season called Happy Birthday? We're celebrating Discovery Mountain's fifth birthday. We remember God's goodness and His plans for our future. So to celebrate, we're giving away some fun prizes. So ask your mom or dad to visit discoverymountain.com slash happy birthday, and there you'll find all the birthday celebration details. Now, in our last episode, Mr. Simon was a little blue. And this morning, he's at Miss Michelle's cafe, and Natasha asked Hattie to see how she thinks Mr. Simon is doing. Is he feeling sad and not himself? Let's join them at the cafe, but we won't be there alone. Everyone in Discovery Mountain's faith is about to be tested by a surprise turn of events. Here's today's episode called Everybody Loves Jake. Here you go, Uncle George. One cup of chamomile tea and a freshly baked raspberry scone. Oh, thank you, Hattie. Uncle George, how is everything? Everything? You know, with Trekkers and at the mayor's office and discovering mountain camp and with you. Oh, well, Trekkers is great. The mayor's office is busy as usual and... Everything will be ready for more campers when summer camp begins. Same old, same old. Same old, same old? Hmm. Well, there's nothing very exciting going on right now. <laughs> but Uncle George, how are you? <sighs> Hattie, I'm feeling a little tired is all. I'm not exactly a spring chicken anymore. A <laughs> spring chicken now, Uncle George. Hattie, don't let the ramblings of an old man keep you from your work. Nonsense. I always have time for you. I ask the question, and you're not rambling or old. <sighs> Mr. Simon, there you are. Logan, is everything all right? It's Jake. Jake? Sit down, Logan, and take a deep breath. Now, you know Chaplain Jake has a catastrophe every day. What is it this time? <laughs> yes, catastrophizing. Jake's an expert. Oh no, this one is real. We were all on the playground and, oh, the room is spinning. Logan, are you okay? Hattie, can I have a glass of water? Uh, sure, of course. Here. Jake was winning at four square. Then I bounced a ball and it went out of bounds. Yes, and then what? We all ran for it, but Jake got there first. Then he tripped. Did he skin his knee? No, he fell into the bushes, but there was a sharp branch and... Uh, room again. Wow, this sounds like a real emergency. Logan, <laughs> take your time. The branch cut up Chaplain Jay's leg pretty bad. There was uh, blood everywhere. Where is Jake now? Natasha took him to the hospital. She told me to come tell you what happened. I'll head right over. I'll call your dad to come and get you. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, uh. <laughs> Sit down, Logan. Help is on the way. Natasha. Granddad, oh, thank goodness you're here. Chris said that Jake is in with Shelly? Yeah, Mom is taking a look at his leg. It looks pretty bad. Natasha and Mr. Simon, I have an update for you. Oh, Ken, thank you. How's Jake? Dr. Simon is with him now. The cut on his leg is pretty bad. He's going to need stitches. Stitches? Can I go back and sit with him? <laughs> Jake, Jake was pretty uh, excitable. Dr. Simon has him calmed down right now. 
She recommends that you wait out here, and I'll update you as soon as he's doing better. But... It's all right, Natasha. I'll wait with you. Thank you, nurse. I'll be back with news as soon as I can. Ken, I just heard. How is he? Oh, Olivia, your brother is going to be all right. He just needs some stitches. I'll go and sit with him. He's calm now. Let's wait out here, Olivia. Listen, I'll bring you news just as soon as I can. Olivia, Natasha, come on. Let's sit. I can't sit. Me neither. Come on, you two. Jake is in good hands. Shirley and Ken are with him. And he's calm now. Oh, that is something. True. You're worried about Jake. Yeah, we all are. This place just wouldn't be the same without him. No. You know, I wish I'd been there the day that Jake arrived in town. Oh, me too. I'll never forget it. Jake was running away from God, just camped out on the edge of town. Gadget and Jamie first spotted him. They did? <laughs> yeah. Jake was napping in my backyard. Granddad! Yes, Jamie, what is There's it? There's a guy in your backyard. A guy? Hmm, that sounds mysterious. I wonder what kind of guy. Well, he's young. Like, I don't know, barely older than a teenager. He's got black hair and glasses, and he smells weird. Like, he hasn't showered in days. Gadget found him probably by the smell. I see. Sounds like the young man I saw sitting on a rock on the edge of the woods this morning. What is this guy up to in my backyard? Well, he's asleep. Let's go take a look. He was right there, Granddad. See, he left behind trash. An empty baggie. It smells like trail mix. <laughs> Jake has always loved a good nap. Yes, and, well, the next day he came into Trekkers. He admired my trail mix selection. <laughs> of course he did. The town hasn't been the same since that day. God truly did bring him here. Man, Jake. He always makes an impression when he arrives somewhere. Like at our wedding. That's right. How did that go again? Well, Jake offered to help Ken and me with anything we needed for a big day. And I just had one request. An important one? Yep. And Jake almost forgot. That's a nice looking aircraft you have there. Thank you. Blue Birdie's a de Havilland beaver. You looking for some fuel? Yes, indeedy. You came to the right place. Good. Fill her up. I'm going to my sister's wedding. That's exciting. There's a restroom and a water fountain on the other side of the hangar. Freshen up a little while I fuel up Blue Birdie. Why, thanks. Oh, such a beautiful day for Olivia's wedding. Ah, there's the water fountain. Ah, what a perfect day to stop and smell the flowers. Oh, they smell wonderful. Blue Birdie is all ready for you. Why, thank you. Come on, Blue Birdie, Olivia's waiting. Never fear, your favorite brother's here at last. <laughs> Jake, you're my only brother. Which makes me your favorite. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you made it. I thought that maybe you forgot. Forgot? Are you kidding? Of course not. Well, come on. There's only an hour until everyone arrives. Hand them over and I'll put them in some water. You, you'll put who in water? <laughs> Jake, don't tease me. You promised you'd bring me the flowers. The flowers? Jake, we talked about this weeks ago. I said I wanted forget-me-nots for my bouquet. Um, how many weeks ago? I was going to remind you, but I didn't think that you'd forget. Olivia, I am so sorry I... Had... It's all right. I'm just really glad that you're here. Now I'm going to go check and see if they have enough chairs set up in the tent for the guests. But your flowers... Are... I'll think of something. Okay. I can't believe I forgot Olivia's flowers. This is a wedding disaster! Oh, what will I do? What did you do? Well, I found some fake flowers in a closet in the house. They weren't too bad. 
Not exactly forget-me-nots. No, not even close. They're not real, they're plastic! This is a wedding disaster! Jake, what really matters is that I'm marrying the man I love. And I have my friends and family with me. Liddy, you're so calm. <laughs> well, someone in this family has to be. Uh, you're a mess from hiking around looking for flowers. There's a restroom and bottled water in the house. Freshen up a little while I finish getting ready. Freshen up a little? Water? Olivia, I remember. I'll be right back. I've got a mission to complete. Jake? Jake? Oh, man. I tried to have a quiet, simple wedding, but in this family, nothing is ever quiet. Or simple. You're back. Good. We're about to begin. Olivia, I found them. Here. Forget-me-nots. Jake, where? How? Oh, they're beautiful. At the place where I fueled Blue Birdie. They're perfect. Livy, I'm so sorry I let you down. You're my sister. I never want to forget what's important to you. Jake, it's all okay now. Go in the tent and sit down. I'm about to get married. Jake to the rescue, even if it was at the last minute. He's always there for us when we need him. He'll be all right. I hope you're right, Granddad. I really do. How is Jake doing? Everybody's concerned about him, but he's in good hands with Dr. Simon and Nurse Ken. We'll take a short break and check in on him again right after this. Hi, producer Steve here. Would you like to hear what's coming up each week in Discovery Mountain and the Discovery Mountain Club? Sign up for our weekly e-newsletter. Visit discoverymountain.com slash newsletter. Happy birthday to Discovery Mountain. Hi everyone, Jean Boonstra, executive producer here. Thank you for welcoming Discovery Mountain into your homes and families these past five years. And as our family, we are thankful for your support. We're asked all the time about how our listeners can support us. Well, here, as we celebrate our fifth birthday, here are five ways. First, pray. Second, tell others about your faith journey and Discovery Mountain's part in it. Third, leave us a good review wherever you listen. Fourth, join the Discovery Mountain Club and gain access to club-only programs while also providing financial support. And fifth, keep exercising your faith. That's why we're here and being a part of your faith journey means the world to us. Happy fifth birthday, Discovery Mountain, and thank you for being a part of the family. Are they going to come and tell us if Jake is okay? I'm texting Ken, but he's not answering. Uh, my mom isn't answering either. Oh, they're taking care of their patient. Miss Simon, is Chaplain Jake okay? Logan, shouldn't you be back at school? No, I have to know if he's okay. Logan, wait up, son. He's over here, Officer Lewis. Oh, good. Son, sit down. It's okay. I don't feel dizzy anymore. I just have to know how Chaplain Jake is. Officer Lewis, uh, you left your radio in the cafe. I did? Oh, so I did. Thank you, Hattie. <laughs> oh, it's all right. I wanted to see how Jake was doing. Yes, we all do. No news yet. Well, can I wait here with you? Sure. Here's a chair, Hattie. All we can really do now is wait. And trust God. Give your burdens to the Lord, and He will take care of you. Yes, that's a beautiful promise. Psalm 55, verse 22. <laughs> it's got me through a few difficult times. <laughs> yes, I've had my share of those, too. In fact, that's how I first met Jake. That's right. It was when Madam Manager was threatening to close the camp. Yeah. Hey, you know what? The very first time I ever met Jake, he was injured. Really? Yeah, and Dr. Simon was taking care of him then, too. I'll never forget it. Hattie? Hattie! 
Cookie. Would someone please find my maple syrup? I haven't had my pancakes yet, and I... Yeah, Mom, Hattie's visiting. Didn't Granddad tell you? Oh, look at you, beautiful girl. I didn't know you were going to be here. Hi, Dr. Simon. Yes, and I have some good news to share with everyone. Oh, wonderful, Hattie. It is so nice to see you. What's the good news? Well, I'll have to wait until Uncle George gets back. He's checking on the Discovery Mountain Camp cafeteria. Uh, hello? Maple syrup, anyone? Help. Hattie, this maple syrup lover is Jake. Jake Donovan. Oh, hi, Jake. How's your ankle? Well, I fell through the floor, so my ankle sort of, eh, you know, somehow I left my maple syrup behind. Oh, well, there's maple syrup right there, Jake. Would you like me to make you some tea with maple syrup? Oh, tea with maple syrup? Oh, sure. Hey, how'd you know about that? I thought it was just a Mr. Simon thing. Well, uh, Mr. Simon is my Uncle George. Oh, wait, you're, you're a Simon too? I am. I spent my summers here at Discovery Mountain Camp. I love it here. Well, Hattie Simon, welcome back. Well, thank you, Jake, but my last name is Bellamy. My mom was a Simon, so I have my dad's last name. Here's your tea and maple syrup. Jake, did you call me Hattie, like with a T? Yeah, isn't that your name? Like a cowboy hat. H-A-T for hat with a T-I-E. Hattie, right? Oh, Jake, no. My name is Hattie. H-A-D-D-I-E. Oh, sorry. Hattie. Haddy. Hey, that's kind of different, isn't it? Well, it's short for... Ah, that's my phone. Ah, oh, it's the hospital. I gotta get back. Hey, Hattie, will you stay at our house tonight? I'd love to visit with you after my shift at the hospital. Sure, I'd love to. Thanks. Jake, go home and elevate that ankle. Hello, this is Dr. Simon. Yes, I'm on my way. Bye, Mom. All right, I guess I'm going to hobble home and make some pancakes. Hey, slide me that maple syrup, Hattie. Sure, here you go. Nice meeting you, Jake. And turned out the camp was okay. You know, we just need to trust God to take care of Jake this time. You know, Jake gets himself into a lot of trouble. Yeah, but this time it was my fault. Your fault? Yeah, I bounced the ball out of bounds when we were playing Foursquare. Logan... That's not your fault. You didn't do it on purpose. It was just an accident, Logan. You sure? Positive. Unpredictable things can happen, <laughs> even at school. What's so funny? Did I ever tell you about the time the students were trapped in the school? Oh, no. What did Jake do that time? Oh, it wasn't Jake's fault. In fact, he was a bit of a hero. Hello? Uh, Mr. Reader, sir. We can't open the front door, or the back door, or the side door. We're, we're snowed in the school. What do we do? Jake, here's what I need you to do for me. Are you listening? I'm listening. First, take a deep breath and stay calm. Oh, I'm calm. I just... Uh, I... Deep breath. Okay. In and out. In and out. Jake, Mrs. Lee is pregnant. And you remember the last time there was a lot of stress when the pipes burst in her basement. Oh, yeah. Chaplain Simon and I saved the day. Yes, yeah, so I heard, but Mrs. Lee had to go to the hospital. She thought she was in labor. Oh, Mr. Reader. Oh, she can't have the baby here in school. I just, I don't Jake, know. Jake, I, I know, I know. So listen up. This is what we're going to do to make sure that that doesn't happen. Okay, I'm listening. You are going to be in charge. I need you to be strong and courageous and get a hold of this situation. Me? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, be a Joshua. I get it. I got it. Yes, be a Joshua. We all need you to be strong right now. Don't be afraid. Oh, I, I just, I just don't know, Mr. Jake, Reader. you can do this. Now, I've already called Officer Lewis, and we're going to monitor the weather. We'll get there to help you out of the school just as soon as we can travel those roads again. Okay? I'll keep you posted. Uh, okay. So, uh, what do I do with these kids while we're waiting? Uh, I'm going to have to teach them or they're going to be bored. Oh, I don't think these kids will be bored. You'll probably have to keep them calm. First step, get Mrs. Lee somewhere comfortable and make sure she doesn't feel stressed. Next, keep those kids under control. Uh, under control? What do you Gotta mean? Gotta go. That's Officer Lewis calling me back now. You can do this, Jake. Hello? Hello? Mr. Reader? What happened? Was everyone okay? Everyone was more than okay, thanks to Jake. 
Come on out, everyone. I have a snowplow and a driver ready to take each of you to your homes. Your parents will sure be happy to see you all. Kayla! Daddy, you rescued us. I had a little help. Jake Donovan, I understand that you were in charge doing this whole operation. Yes, Officer Lewis, sir. I was. Nice work, son. Nice work. Now take these kids to the snowplow. Yes, sir. All right, everyone, follow me. Hey, it's not every day you get to ride home from school on a snowplow at midnight. That's a great story. Good old Jake. Ken, do you have news on Jake? What's the news on Jake? We'll find out right after this. Hey, it's Sean Boonstra, Speaker Director of The Voice of Prophecy, the ministry that brings you this program. Has Discovery Mountain been an encouragement to the children in your life? Weekly Discovery Mountain episodes are made possible through the generosity of our supporters. Would you like to join us as a supporter? Find out how you can receive a Discovery Mountain t-shirt as a thank you gift. Call us at 1-877-566-7365 today. That's 877-566-7365. Let's find out how Jake is doing. Well, Dr. Simon stitched him up. Oh, that's good news. Jake told me to send in his best friend. Oh, well, I'm friend. ready. Jake, my buddy. Jack, oh, Jake, I'm here for you. Best friend? I'm honored. You guys, he means me. Uh, right, Ken? Yep, he means you. I'll bring you back a report. <laughs> well, of course it was you. Sure, I knew that. Well, that was awkward. Natasha, of course. What, Jake? Jake? Natasha, you're here. Of course, we've been in the waiting room this whole time. Hey, look at my cool stitches. Cool. Oh yeah. Dr. Simon gave him something for the pain. Just buzz if you need me. Ah, uh, got it. Thanks, Ken. Hey, look, my leg doesn't even hurt. Not even one bit. Well, Jake, that's good for now. You know what? I'm so glad I met you. You are? You really didn't like me in the beginning. Not true. Yep, it is. You were so competitive. Well, you were trying to take my place in the family. <laughs> good times. When we first met, you had no idea who I was. I did, too. No, you didn't. Of course I did. Jake, that's not how I remember it. I love to go wandering along the mountain trail. When it's Excuse me. Huh? Who, who's there? I, I'm over here on the side of the road. Oh, hello there. I've been driving for hours. Can you tell me, am I close to Discovery Mountain? Oh yeah, just, just turn at the next corner and then you'll see the Discovery Mountain camp sign. Oh good, I had no idea how far up the mountain this town was. Oh, well, well welcome newcomer. I'm Jacob P. Donovan, and you are? Well pleased to meet you, Jacob P. Oh, you're Jake. <laughs> yes indeedy. Hey, are you visiting family for Thanksgiving? Yes I am, I can't wait to oh, see them. Oh, well you're gonna love Discovery Mountain. Hey, if you need anything at all, you can find it in Trekkers. I know. I can't wait to see Trekkers. I've heard all about it. Yeah, Trekkers has the best supply of organic trail mix anywhere. I've trained Mr. Simon well. Oh? Yeah, you know, he founded this place back in 1968. So I've heard. He's an amazing man. He's like a grandfather to me. <laughs> you don't say. Oh, and only the family knows this. We're keeping it on the down low, but Chaplain Simon is home for the holidays again. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's super secret news, family only. And you know, Dr. Simon has patched me up more than once. Let's see, uh, uh, I've twisted an ankle, and uh, not once, but twice, but... Uh, yeah, she's a great doctor. Maybe the best. You know Dr. Simon? Yes, but I don't call her that. Do you know Jamie? Uh, yeah, I do. And don't forget about Gadget. Oh, Gadget. I am his favorite. He always runs right to me. He does? Yeah. Oh, Jamie is the little sister I've never had. Uh, I, yesterday, I told her about the frog eye salad I'm making for Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Frog eye salad? Jake, please tell me you're not out here looking for frogs for a salad, are you? What? Why would I need frogs for a salad? That's that's gross. What kind of weirdo are you? Frog Eye. Yeah. The name, Frog Eye. Oh, OK. 
Okay, no, there are absolutely no frogs or eyes in my salad. Just pineapple and oranges and a genie de pepe pasta Oh, and... that's a relief. Uh, Jake, thanks for the directions. I'll see you around. Oh, yeah. C- come into Trekkers and I'll introduce you to the whole Simon family sometime. <laughs> well, uh, okay. Thanks, Jake. Uh, what was your name? Natasha. N- Natasha what? Oh, you'll see. Bye, Jake. See, Jake? You had no idea. Jake. Jake. (laughs) Ah, Jake. Enjoy your nap. Everybody loves you. Jake's still doing okay? Hattie! Yes, he's napping now. Did everyone else go home? Yeah, they said to tell you to call if you need anything. That's sweet. We'll be all right. Hattie, you didn't have to stay. Oh, I know. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about Uncle George. Oh, right. Well, what do you think, Hattie? Does he seem a little sad to you? Definitely. This morning at the cafe, he just wasn't himself. So it isn't just my imagination. (sighs) No, but I have an idea. You do? Tell me. Well, I was looking at my calendar, and I was thinking that sometime next week we could plan something extra special. Well, Director Doug, I'm glad that Jake is going to be all right. Me too. He sure had everyone concerned, didn't he? He did, and everyone exercised their faith as they waited. And the verse that Officer Lewis shared, it's a good one. Mm, That's right, Psalm 55, verse 22. Yeah, it says, Give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. God took care of Jake, and Natasha and Hattie are a little concerned about Mr. Simon. Mm Mm-hmm, they are. And I think for good reason. He does seem a little blue. Hmm, I wonder what Hattie's idea is. I don't know, but I hope that it will cheer Mr. Simon up. Well, I sure hope so. And as we're waiting for our next episode, we'll keep celebrating Discovery Mountain's birthday. (laughs) Yes. Listeners, grab a parent and ask them to go online with you. Yeah, together you can visit discoverymountain.com slash happy birthday. There you can enter for a chance to win prizes. And be sure to listen carefully to this episode. The answers to the birthday quizzes are in each of the episodes. So visit us at discoverymountain.com slash happy birthday. And in the meantime, keep exercising your faith. (laughs) We'll see you next time. You've been listening to Discovery Mountain, where the air is clear, clear enough to hear your imagination and where every day is an exercise in faith. To listen to other episodes and to send us a message, visit us online at discoverymountain.com. Discovery Mountain is a production of The Voice of Prophecy. Join us again next time here in Discovery Mountain, where every day is an exercise in faith. Everybody Loves Jake was written by Jean Boonstra, produced by Steve Phillips, and post-produced in Ontario, Canada by Douglas Bruce and Danny Columbi. Recorded in Loveland, Colorado at The Voice of Prophecy Studios and in Bowmanville, Ontario. 